Olympic Stadium, where Germany take on Brazil. With the World Cup in 2006 taking place in Germany, the host nation are exempt from qualification. So, while the rest of Europe were involved in the group qualifying matches, Germany faced the world champions in a friendly. New coach Jürgen Klinsmann has rung the changes in his German squad, bringing in a crop of young, fresh faces and a more aggressive attacking style. When you have a situation that you come out of a disappointment, which, which happened in Portugal, and you have some changes, and, an, and a new coaching staff is taking over, that is always kind of a, a new beginning for a team. And, and we have a, a very specific goal. We, we want to do really, really well in 2006. And uh, we have the advantage to be qualified already, so we can actually focus on, on the development of specific players, so we can tr try out things that we maybe couldn't try out if we would go into the qualifying round. So we can kind of yeah, throw in some young players and give them a chance to play, which would be maybe a lot harder if you go through a qualifying round. Klinsmann has made a promising start to his career as an international coach. In his first match in charge, his side beat Austria 3-1, but the Brazilians would be an altogether sterner test. These two sides met in the final of the 2002 World Cup in Japan, when Brazil won by two goals to nil, Ronaldo scoring both of those goals. The Real Madrid striker was absent from this fixture, but it looked as if the South Americans would again have the upper hand, when nine minutes in, Ronaldinho queued up a free kick just outside the penalty area. The Barcelona striker firing his shot past Oliver Kahn. Ronaldinho has now scored six times in his last five internationals, including two goals so far in their World Cup qualifying campaign, leaving Brazil top of their group. The Klinsmann's Germany are a side equipped to attack, and on 17 minutes, the chance fell to the in-form Kevin Karanyi. The Stuttgart striker, who was born in Brazil, made no mistake. Karanyi taking advantage of a gaping hole between the Brazilian centre-backs. There were no more goals in an entertaining match, as honours ended even, one all. We stick with international action now as we turn our attention to the latest round of World Cup qualifiers. We'll have action from Group 1 later in the programme, but we start in Group 2. No international is more hotly contested than a match between neighbours Greece and Turkey. Greece, still basking in the glory of the success of Euro 2004, was shocked by a 2-1 defeat in Albania in their opening group match last week, while Turkey, semi-finalists at the World Cup, were held 1-1 at home by Georgia. In a tight encounter, the first opening of the game went to Greece. Bolton Wanderers striker Stelios Yanakopoulos finding himself one-on-one. -on -one. His goal-bound shot scrambled off the line by Servet Setin. The chance woke Turkey up, and ten minutes later, the visitors found themselves with an opportunity to take the lead, with the ball breaking to Mihat inside the penalty area. His well-struck shot tipped over by Antonios Nikopolidis. With the home crowd becoming restless for a goal against their great rivals, it looked as if the moment had arrived in the 39th minute. Djorkos Saitaridis cross caused panic, but AEK player Konstantinos Katsouris could do no better than find the hands of a relieved rush to Rekba. Chances became even rarer in the second half, but with two minutes to go, Angelos Haristeas, the scorer of the winning goal in the European Championships, scrambled the ball over the line. Celebrations were short-lived, Swedish referee Anders Frisk ruling the goal out for a foul on the keeper. Griso claimed one last chance to secure the victory. Katsun is going to ground in the penalty area under a challenge. Mr Frisk ignored the cries of the Partizan home fans to wave away the appeal. Nil-nil the final score, an unsatisfactory result for both sides. In the other Group 2 matches, Georgia beat Albania and the Ukraine scored a 90th minute winner to overcome Kazakhstan. Georgia and the Ukraine topped the group with four points each. In Group 3, Portugal followed up their away win against Latvia by taking on Estonia in Leria. 
The visitors arrived in Portugal as group leaders after victories over Liechtenstein and Luxembourg. And in a confident start to the match, Estonia carved out an opportunity in the 31st minute. Raul Peroia's header cleared off the line by Costinha. After the break, Portugal threw on an extra striker in the shape of Helder Postiga as they continued to hunt for goals. But it was beginning to look like one of those nights when nothing would go to plan. Portugal needed to be wary of being caught on the break. Andreas Opa's header hitting the post and given a second chance as the ball fell to his feet. That's one shot he'd prefer to forget. With the game reaching the last quarter of an hour, Estonia packed their defence as they hung on for a point. But when Deco curled in a cross from the right, Manchester United's Ronaldo demonstrated why he's one of the hottest young properties in world football. The goal forced Estonia to go in search of an equaliser. And as they did, gaps began to appear at the back. And a Ronaldo turned provider, Helder Postiga was on hand to double the lead. As Estonia tired, Portugal exploited the weak spot they'd found in the visitors' back line. Miguel, the provider this time, teeing up Pauletta to head in and make it 3 0 with four minutes remaining. In the penultimate minute, another Ronaldo cross found Postiga lurking in the box, his header wrapping up a 4 0 victory. Also in Group 3, Luxembourg lost out in a 4-3 thriller against Latvia and Slovakia hammered seven past Liechtenstein. Slovakia lead the table ahead of Portugal and Estonia, who've played a game less. In Group 4, France had Patrick Vieira sent off in an unconvincing 2-0 win against the Faroe Isles. Switzerland were held to a one-all draw by the Republic of Ireland and Israel beat Cyprus 2-1. In Group 5, Scotland were desperate to get their World Cup qualifying campaign off to a winning start against a Slovenia side buoyed by a 3-0 win over Moldova four days earlier. Having missed out on Euro 2004, the Scots needed a positive start and they wasted no time in setting out their intentions. Just four minutes were on the clock when Paul Dickoff hooked in a shot only to see it tip agonisingly over the bar. Slovenia weren't there just to make up the numbers though and in Milenko Asimovic who scored all three goals against Moldova they have a man in form, his free kick just off target but it was Scotland who had the best of the first half goal scoring chances firstly Gary Naismith should have done better when he was put through by his Everton teammate James McFadden and then McFadden himself was handed the chance to become a Hamden hero Scotland have a reputation for calamitous goalkeeping and Craig Gordon did his best to live up to that stereotype dropping the ball at Ermin Siliak's feet Malky Mackay to the rescue Slovenia were beginning to find holes in the home defence Milenko Asimovic finding himself free in the penalty area another chance wasted shortly afterwards the Scottish keeper caused another anxious moment failing to get a grip on Nastya Che's long range shot Gordon redeeming the situation himself this time. Relieved not to be trailing, Scotland gathered themselves for a final effort. Nigel Quasi's 30 yard of the last throw of the dice, but Brute Maverick was equal to it. Norway and Belarus also drew in their Group 5 encounter. Alessandro Del Piero scored in Italy's 1 0 win against Moldova. The Italians in pole position with two wins from two games. Three of the six teams in Group 6 come from the British Isles. Two of those sides, Wales and Northern Ireland, clashed at Cardiff's Millennium Stadium in a fiery encounter. The game was only nine minutes old when Michael Hughes lunged in on Robbie Savage and the two squared up to each other. After the dust had settled, both teams found themselves down to ten men. But Northern Ireland, who started as rank outsiders to win the game, adapted more quickly to the change in numbers. The disgraced players were still making their way down the tunnel when Jeff Whitley latched onto a free kick to score his first international goal in five years. Ten minutes later, Wales again failed to deal with a long ball, letting David Healy get behind them and lob Paul Jones to score. But it was to be Healy's final act, as he received not one, but two yellow cards for an overzealous celebration. Northern Ireland two up 
but two men down after just 21 minutes. Wales added another attacker as they laid siege to the visitors' defence in search of goals. When Gary Speed and Craig Bellamy combined to set up John Hartson, the Celtic man made no mistake with the header that threw his side a lifeline. After the break, Northern Ireland packed their defence and threw everything into hanging on to their lead. Clear-cut chances were few and far between for the home side, but when local hero Robert Earnshaw popped up with 15 minutes to go, the substitute planted his header into the back of the net, saving Welsh blushes. To all is how it finished, the Irish giving the Welsh a real run for their money. Also in Group 6, Austria beat Azerbaijan 2-0, and England had an away win in Poland thanks to Narkadziusz Glavatsky's own goal. Austria and England each have four points at the head of the table. Group 7 saw Lithuania beat San Marino 4-0, and Spain opened their campaign with a one-all draw against Bosnia. Lithuania, who've played a game more than most of the others, lead the group. In Group A, 